Good morning, folks. You are looking at L waves ripped across the planet by a significant earthquake. Yesterday, when I called a quake watch for the beginning of February, I mentally recalled the running joke last year with these watches where I'd always seem to miss the first one or two in the swarm, happening usually one to two days before the watch period. Usually, it was the leading edge of a coronal hole aspect being geo-effective and I had simply waited for the meat of the variables to present themselves. Well, I did it again. I ignored the leading coronal hole causation, despite the fact that it was directly facing Earth. I called the quake watch to start February in Chile, made me look like a fool two days early. A solid 6.7 earthquake followed by a six-pointer in the Santa Cruz Islands. USGS upgraded the Chile quake to 6.8 and we had a second Santa Cruz quake. Then this morning, Alaska rumbled and we doubled the 2013 significant quake list in under 13 hours. For those who didn't watch me do this all last year or who missed the statistical recap, perhaps you can pick up with the experts who are now converging on this general topic but are starting with the long periodicity side of the subject. This paper is a tremendous start, indicating that the planets affect long-term solar cycles. It's free, easy to find, and link below. I won't spoil the fun, but essentially, the planets affecting the solar system center of mass versus the solar center of mass creates torque. This concept can help explain why following the planets works for earthquake watches as well. The comet Venus? The ancients claimed they watch her birth, and that she appeared like a great comet. This must bring a smile to David Talbot of the Thunderbolts Project. Interesting article here describing soil temperature changes at the caldera in Naples, Italy. Let's all hope this big guy stays asleep. If you live near here, the cyanobacteria is highly toxic to pets and small children. Just don't risk it. Radioactive cows in the Daiichi zone confirming that the calves and babies have higher concentration than the adult cows. Cyclone Phalang doing what the experts thought it'd do, swinging south right before Madagascar. Then there's the number one weather story. I know I've been more focused on the USA weather for a few days, but there's a very good reason for that. We have tornadoes, severe storms, flooding, hail, wind, damage, and now death. And it's not over. There will be hurricane speed wind gusts in the northeast while tornado warnings aren't going away either. Power is out all over the place and it's so cold on the backside of the system, I'm speechless. We need to replace the term global warming with climate extremes or just climate change because to peg just heating is preposterous. Space weather. Bartol spaceship Earth shows cosmic ray density rising, but the muon network appears to show it falling. Interesting. The sun tried to get some flaring going, but in truth, all the dangerous spots are on the backside of the sun. Not that we don't have things to watch here on the Earth-facing solar disk. In fact, that filament finally erupted, but did so not from the top, but from the lower corona. Much plasma falls back into the sun during filament eruptions, but this type released a solid CME. This happened right before the news, so satellites are not fully updated, but just look how widely the ejecta is dispersed. I have stereo A and B here lined up so the Earth would be dead center from both angles, and you can see the blast visibly headed at Earth from both cameras. We'll be watching the satellite updates and these dark coronal holes turning in. Let's hope those early quakes took some of the steam out of our dynamo, but the watch technically continues. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.